This is 50 Minute Fundamentals, where we interview core contributors within crypto and gain insights into their day-to-day operations. In this episode, I'm joined by Anna George, co-founder of Cow Protocol, a MetaDEX aggregation protocol that acts as a batch settlement layer on top of all other AMMs and DEX aggregators. Cow Protocol launched in February 2021 and has since done around $19 billion in trading volume. The crypto exchange market is one of the most competitive within the space, and decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap and DYDX are averaging daily trading volumes of around $1 billion. To describe the market opportunity in more detail, total trading volume in crypto is currently roughly around $100 billion per day, and exchanges typically generate revenue by taking a fee from swaps made on on their platforms. In this episode with Anna, we discuss what Cow Protocol is, how it's positioned within the market, how it came to be, the current economic model and plans for monetization, the challenges that need to be tackled, the Cow token, and more. Hi, Anna. Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. It is great to have you on. Hi, super happy to be here. Now, before we dive into any of the details, it would be great if you can give us a quick intro to Cow Protocol. Basically, how I like to describe Cow Protocol itself is always as a DEX aggregator. So that means it always provides the best price across all existing on-chain liquidity. Maybe another way of describing it would be just calling it the sky scanner of DEX trading. So no matter what token you trade or what volume you want to trade, CowSwap will always provide the best price to you. And that, of course, is mostly a convenience feature so that users don't have to compare prices. However, CowSwap offers significantly more than that. I would say the real value add of CowSwap is that it fully protects its users against any sort of execution risk. So this would, for example, include protecting users against placing a bad trade. For example, if there's a high price impact, you will be warned. And on top of that, um, it provides users against any form of MEV attack. It significantly reduces the risk for users basically placing any trade. And yeah, I would I would say that is like the brief summary of what CalSoft does. And I know that your origin story involves spinning off from Gnosis DAO. Do you want to tell us a bit more about how Cal came to be? It goes way back. It actually goes back to 2016 or 17 because we as a team we span out of Gnosis and I don't know if everyone here knows Gnosis or remembers the origin story behind Gnosis was building prediction markets and the issue around prediction markets is that you have outcome tokens that are not very liquid that means that you need to have some sort of sophisticated trading mechanism that still ensures that these illiquid assets can be traded and exchanged. And basically because of that, Gnosis started looking into batch auctions. And CowSwap is not the first batch auction product that Gnosis worked on before we had. It was called Dutch Exchange and then the UI was called Slow the Trade because trading was taking six hours. So the user experience was horrible, but it was a very interesting like first get-go at Ethereum trading that wasn't pure AMM based. And then after that, we built the pre- predecessor, the, the direct batch auction predecessor of Kausa, which was called Gnosis Protocol V1, also had a few UX hurdles. But yeah, that was basically, that was the one aim that Gnosis had was to solve this liquidity issue for long tail tokens. The other idea that was already, I think it was Martin Kappelmann who, who already talked about it in 2017, he kind of predicted also the issue of MEV, that basically if you have one Ethereum block where you have a single token per trade with lots of different prices, this is creating these MEV opportunities that basically others want to snipe in and take a profit from you by extracting your slippage tolerance. And batching of orders avoids the scenario because you basically provide a unique single clearing price for the same token pair and the same Ethereum block. And that was kind of, I think, the second reason for why Nosa started diving more into batch auctions. And then a year and a half ago, almost two years ago at this stage, actually, we, we created CowSwap. And I think by adding like this fun meme approach to it, we kind of managed to get adoption. And this is what, I, what is taking us to today we we decided to spin out of gnosis and really go full focus on on cowswap and gather community around it and uh, hopefully making it very successful great little history lesson there for anyone that wasn't familiar so amazing now the sky scanner for dexes i love that and you also spoke a bit about the benefits that you introduced i'd love to dive into detail around that a bit more so maybe at a more granular level could you describe the main innovations and benefits that cow protocol has introduced to the market what castle really does is this full scale protect that it provides to users and I touched up on it a little bit when I just disclaimed the the history behind cows of this batching of transactions 
And to explain on maybe a little bit more technical level what that even means is that when users go to CowSwap, they don't sign a Ethereum transaction, but they sign a message. So what they sign is the limit price of the order, the token they want to sell, the token they want to buy, the expiration time. And by only signing a message, basically, this allows for two things. One is that the transaction can now be executed for them by applying certain advanced mechanisms. For example, it allows to then integrate flashboards or cooperate even with something like you, you can imagine a block builder cooperation or just adjusting their parameter to protect the trade more. So if a, if a user, for example, picked a 2% slippage tolerance, which would create huge MEV opportunities by being able to adjust the parameters for the better, only for the better, obviously, for the user, you would be able to, the so-called solvers, and I believe we will talk about this part in a bit, are able to see what is the actual required slippage tolerance to execute the trade successfully. And if, for example, only 0.2% slippage tolerance are required, they can reduce this so that um, the risk of this transaction being exploited is significantly reduced. So that, that is one part. So basically, by signing a message, you enable now a third party who is really expert in trading or, or transaction execution to improve the execution for you. And then Secondly, it allows for batching of the transactions. And what does batching mean? It basically, it's just a more fancy term for peer-to-peer -peer trading. So what CowSwap can do is to batch or match multiple user orders together into one. Meaning, to give an example here, is if you as a user, you want to trade your DAI for Ether, and then there's someone else who actually wants to sell Ether for DAI, you can match these transactions directly together. And this has advantages. This improves the price for the user on multiple fronts because first, you have significantly reduced price impact. Imagine an AMM curve where, let's say, you have a large trade size of 100K or so, for example, and you would settle that on on Uniswap and the less liquid the token actually is, the more it impacts the price. So you, you would get a significantly worse deal. But now if you have a counter trade of someone wanting to do the exact opposite trade and you match those transactions together, you can reduce the price impact down to zero. Then on top of that, you avoid protocol fees. So the higher the volume, of course, you're trading, the more significant it is if you have to pay a base point of more in protocol fees. I believe on Uniswap, it's currently 0.3%. And you can avoid those fees. And then also you have reduced gas costs as well. So there's a bunch of basically um, price benefits that we can offer our users by being able to batch their transactions together. And this phenomena of connecting two traders who can directly exchange assets with each other is what you call coincidence of wants, right? Exactly. This is this is exactly where the name CowSwap is coming from. So it's just a description of this economic phenomenon, COW, CowSwap. Yeah, I love the name. You mentioned solvers briefly and I do want to speak a bit more about them so can you describe what a solver's role is and then in general what are the other stakeholders involved in this system because that is so different to the traditional AMM yes for sure I think maybe the best way of explaining is this kind of going through the life cycle of an order on on cow swap so what happens I mentioned at the beginning when a user goes to cow swap they place a trade by signing a message and then the order is collected in an off-chain order and now this is where the solvers come into play. Solvers are external parties that engage in a competition to find the best execution price for the existing trades that are in the order book. So it can be anyone. Really, it's we, we have a pretty good ecosystem right now of 10 external parties are running their own solvers. And anyone who's up for the challenge can do it. It's a decentralized ecosystem. And then they compete against each other to find the best execution route for the user. And for this, they have limitless opportunities to outcompete the other. The simple one is, of course, just integrate more liquidity sources. So, of course, everyone has the standard AMMs integrated, such as Balancer, Uniswap, 
up, so she's up and so on. But of course, the more you're up to speed with incorporating any of the newest upcoming AMMs, the more possibilities you have to potentially find a better price. They, of course, also aggregate. So they some of them just aggregate the aggregators to make sure that if for whatever reason someone finds the best execution route, that's also accounted for. But also the service themselves also split the liquidity across multiple paths. And then they, they can also have their own liquidity. They can collaborate with market makers to vote better prices. And then, like I mentioned, they can have some more advanced mechanisms as well. For example, th something that could be possible is that they collaborate with a block builder and ensure that the other transactions that are currently taking place on Ethereum are basically placed in a way that they actually improve the price point for the users that then trade on CowSwap. That is, of course, a very advanced strategy, but this is just to like give examples. And they, they can do other things to also reduce um, gas costs. And of course, like the one that of everyone obviously is encouraged to do is just like finding the best batches amongst the exi existing trades. So I gave an easy example of saying, oh, let's say there's two user orders that can be matched together. But this is multidimensional. You can have 10 different user trades that are in some ways intertwined and like match them together. And the idea here is really to incentivize them to keep innovating so that the competition is optimizing for finding the best price for the user and having the, the securest way of executing this. And then the solver who is winning the competition is basically basically checked who's providing the most surplus, the most value add for users, that solver is being picked, then um, is the one who's also in charge of executing the transactions. And that's basically the end of the order lifecycle. At the end, the, the solver is getting a reward for um, having found the best solution. And that's basically in short the lifecycle. Uh, now that we know all the stakeholders involved in the whole life cycle there, let's speak a bit about financials. I'd love to get a breakdown of both your business and economic model so we understand how the cash flows through the protocol. Cool, yeah, for sure. So starting to explain it from the user perspective, since users are only signing a message when they trade on CowSwap, they are not paying Ethereum gas transaction costs. So instead, what they do is they basically just sign for paying a fee in the sale token of their order, which is estimated to be equivalent to the cost of the execution of the trade and then the solvers who carry the actual execution cost they have, they receive this amount from the user so basically they just take it from the user trade to cover the transaction cost which is makes for a great user experience because they don't have to pay any gas costs so theoretically you can place a trade on cowser without even having ether in your account and then the solver receives the reward in cow tokens this is currently paid out by cowdao and that is basically the status quo of today we decided to not charge users any fees yet. The cool thing about CowSwap is that essentially we are already providing an additional value to users, the so-called surplus, basically because we are providing a better execution to our users. They get more money back than they would get on any other exchange. So our idea is to take only a cut from the surplus that we are generating for them. So in a way, we will never take any direct fees from them, but we will only take a cut from the generated surplus for them. And ultimately, the revenue expectation here is very similar to Uniswap and OneInch, where we want to know, okay, they take a fee of the volume that their users are, are trading. And in principle, it's going to be the same on CowSub, just that the difference is that it's basically th that fee is taken based on the created sur surplus. Definitely. So not charging fees right now. It's all about volume, market share, but the monetization model is there and it's very clear. Now you mentioned other aggregators and, and I just wanted to ask your view on how you're positioned within the broader exchange market from a competition perspective. Are you more of a partner or competitor to the DEXs that you aggregate or how do you see that? In my opinion, at this stage, we are all the partners in a way and collaborating just because we have the same mission, right? We want blockchain to be adopted by really the masses. And to really get to this stage, I think we we have to think at this stage still more collaborative. Having said that, of course, there's also we also have competitors. I mean, the, the deck space is a very competitive market. And from my perspective, I always like to differentiate between maybe two different groups. One is the simply the, the other DEXs, the existing AMMs. And here I believe that they will always stay around to some extent, but I personally believe that their relevance will reduce over time as liquidity provision in itself is it's just not capital efficient. And then there have also been recently more and more analytic reports that really display that liquidity provision 
is also not profitable. So I think it will it will stay around because especially for long tail tokens, it is necessary, but I think the significance will reduce. And then the other sort of bucket of competitors that I would see are the DEX aggregators. We have the known ones, Matcha, we have One Inch, we have Powerswap. And then we also have increasingly more projects that do their own liquidity aggregation as well. And there is actually a very interesting phenomenon. We just did a study this week that shows that at least 60% of all trades, the top aggregators are offering price differences of a few cents only. So the, the difference is really irrelevant. So we will hopefully soon publish an article actually about this. And um, in my personal view, this competition right now isn't adding a lot of value. So where I would really like to see the market shift is more focusing on this additional value that can be added for users after the trade execution takes place. Right now, users are taking focus on what does the UI show me? What's the best price I can see? But you cannot evaluate this fully, right? Because how ultimately what price you get only is decided after the trade has happened. To give an example, I think I don't want to name put any name here, but one aggregator we noticed is consistently providing better prices than us on stable to stable tokens. But we realized that the paths they are finding are not executable. So in those cases, the transactions are always failing. In the end, on these aggregators, the user is paying for failed transaction costs. And that's, of course, not a good user experience. So this is where I'm saying we should rather focus on what is the end value that the user is receiving. Unfortunately, users often look at, okay, this is what quotes me the best price, but they never check their actual wallet, how many tokens they received in the end, because it's not the same, right? Like you sign a limit price and then the UI shows you, oh, you probably get this amount. And then they don't realize that the actual amount they end up receiving in their wallet is significantly less. And Cowsop is really optimizing on giving the users the best price ultimately in their wallet. And I hope really that we can somehow manage to change the narrative and like educate users to pay more focus. Fully agree with you on that. That was a very interesting insight to share as well. Uh, on educating users, you need to attract users to use your protocol as well. So I want to speak a bit about how you've been doing that and especially related to the cow tokens airdrop last year. Now, what was the goal of this airdrop and how was it structured? Cool. Yeah. So the goal was full decentralization. Basically, we really believe that we need to build a community around CowSwap. Of course, A, it's necessary to create a community of traders. Cowswap has a positive network effect. The more users we have trading, the more batches we have, the more value we can create for our users. And then, of course, also just to, to improve the robustness of the system, to have more solvers in the competition that would then lead to better prices for our users. And then also, of course, to create more innovation around it, to build an ecosystem of like builders who, who support us. For example, right now we have a grand style since mid of last year and already quite a few really cool proposals that are being worked on, for example, time-weighted average price trading. There's a community contributor currently working on the smart contract. So that, that was one big goal behind the adder, right? Like reach a big community. And how we have done it, we distributed cow token to more than 50,000 Ethereum addresses. And we did this based on anyone basically who was a cow swap user, either because they had traded a minimum amount of times on CowSwap or like a minimum value. And then we also kind of uh, distributed cow tokens to the GNO token holders because essentially we were born out of Gnosis DAO. They bootstrapped us. We wouldn't exist without them. So this was kind of a compensation to GNO token holders. And I would say that our airdrop was quite unique in the sense that we allowed the cow community to also participate in the fundraising round itself. The reasoning was that always big institutions, VCs, funds, they always get the opportunity to buy in very early at low prices into projects. And of course, they also contribute value, but a huge value add that really decides whether a project succeeds or not is the community itself. That's why we thought it, it wouldn't be fair to not give them the same opportunity. And we created smart contracts that gave all community members basically the option to also participate in this fundraising round. And I think the, the cool thing here is that we really managed to do everything smart contract based, even the fundraising round with the VCs. There were no legal documents involved, all purely smart contract logic, and uh, it worked out right. So yeah, I think that that was definitely a success. 
That's amazing. And if I've understood right, the cow tokens role currently is governance and rewards. Do you have any set plans for what is going to be in the future? Yes. So the cow tokens, it's one part is, of course, the governance. Another part right now where it's already used for is for solver incentivization to that they're basically receiving their rewards in cow tokens. And then there's also one small benefit already for cow token holders. They get reduced fees on the transaction costs when they trade on cow swap. And then basically the projection of where the cow economics will be in the future, this is basically the value capture where I think it's kind of straightforward. Once we will be starting to take a fee from the surplus, the, the rewards will be used to probably buy back cow and then there's different options of how it could be used either when the cow token is bought back it can be burned to reduce the overall supply or an alternative would be just to to use it to build up revenue of cow itself and then another option is of course to just pay out dividends to all cow token holders either way i think this is going to be a de decision that we obviously will be taking jointly or that cow will be taking and um, the with the overall objective to derive the value back to the cow token holders got it now the market's been doing its thing for quite some time now. And I don't know about you, but I've actually been feeling a bit of positive momentum over like the past week or two, which has been great to see. Don't know if you agree, but I'd love you to speak a bit about your current growth drivers or any challenges that you might be facing on that front. For sure. I must admit, I actually don't observe the, the market. It's just, I don't know. I've, I've done it in the past. It just gave me anxiety. So I stopped. I'm not looking at it anymore. And ultimately, I think it's also to some extent healthy that I feel like when we have when we are in a bull market, there's a, a lot of noise. And it's also harder to differentiate between who are actually serious projects that are here because they believe in the technology versus who are projects that are just here to, to make a quick buck. Anyway, challenges. Of course, you have challenges. And actually, I think it's important to focus on those. And I would say, of course, the, the bear market is one of them. It's just the reality that right now it is difficult to, to address new users because not so many new users are entering the market. But the other challenge that I see for that is for CowSwap specifically is gaining more awareness. Like we... We looked at our internal metrics and one thing that we are scoring really well at, for example, is retention. Users that have been trading on CowSwap, they love it, they return, and there we have the highest rate across all other aggregators. But the problem that we have is really getting this attention of new users trying out CowSwap. So we need to get them, we need to make them aware that CowSwap exists and like get them to the point that they actually place a trade here. And I think there, um, of course, Uniswap as AMM and one inch as aggregator are in the advantage because they have been the first movers in their this respective fields. And basically, if you ask a random person what DEX comes to mind, it's probably one of those that will be mentioned first. And if you Google any Medium articles or so, those are the ones that will always be mentioned. And I think this is the biggest challenge right now that we have, as a team have to overcome and like find our own ways of ensuring that we get attention and that we are able to grow our general market share. Yeah, that's great. And then just one final question, which is what's next for Cow Protocol on the mid to long term roadmap? And like, especially what you're currently focusing on from both a business and product development perspective. Awesome. So the short term focus for us is now going to be DAOs and smart contract accounts. There's multiple reasons. I'm not going to go into detail for all of them. But one is that CowSwap specifically is just its USP. It's like specifically targeted at DAOs and multisig trades. It's basically the setup of not directly committing to a specific execution route and having your slippage protected are features that are very relevant for, for DAO trades where you basically set up a trade and don't execute it immediately. And it's also generally for the bear market, I would say DAO trading are just the ones DAOs are still around. Treasuries, treasury management is still a very important topic. And yeah, like I said, Castle is just uniquely positioned to really favor these sorts of integrations. So that's a short-term focus. And for that to improve those experiences, we are looking into um, supporting ERP-1271 for gases trading. We also want to enable partially fillable orders. We launched limit orders last year, but only fill or kill orders. And the unique thing about actually our limit orders is that they are also able to capture surplus. No other existing limit orders are able to do this, meaning users who place limit orders can actually get a better price than the limit they put in. And this is something where we also noticed that DAOs actually interested for the treasury management in allowing partial fills. So that's one of the next features coming up. And yeah, a few fun things also that uh, there will be a 
probably a cow fortune feature. I don't want to tell too much, but we want to also still drive on the meme curve a little bit and give users just like a better fun experience when the place is swap on cow swap. I love that cow fortune feature. I'm looking forward to it. And I promise to have you on again once you launch that to speak about it in more detail. Also on the non-meme stuff, exciting stuff coming up. Thank you so much, Anna, for this great comprehensive overview of cow protocol. Wish you all the best of luck in building. Thank you so much for having me.